Dune has much within its scope that is comparable with the heroic western tradition, and its use of mythology provides an excellent framework to understand the nature of its own unique hero. Having discussed the ideas, philosophies and concepts behind Herbert's own thoughts about the hero and the messianic impulses that overtake society, and Herbert's subtle subversion of these traditions in science fiction, it is best now to turn to the texts themselves. The best way to illustrate these ideas is via the action within the novels, the subtle way we as readers are led to take part in this messianic impulse in Dune, and our astonishment when this goes horribly wrong. The traits of the hero, indeed the archetypal tragic hero, are not just expressed through the character of Paul Atreides in Dune. Numerous characters in the novels, including Paul's father Leto, his son Leto II, Duncan Idaho, Liet Kynes, and Miles Tegg, all represent the concept of the dangerous hero, while the Baron Harkonnen, the Emperor Shaddam IV, and Fade Rautha represent typical inversions of the hero. They are unusual villains in that they often both understand the nature of the hero and how to subvert this role to their benefit. In addition, the messianic impulse of the masses is illustrated most effectively through the Fremen and their leaders, especially Stilgar. This is shown both in their attitudes and devotion to Paul and Liet Kynes, as well as through those that serve House Atreides with blind loyalty, such as Duncan Idaho, Gurney Halleck and Thufur Howitt. We must also not forget that we as readers of these novels are also complicit in our desire to see Paul succeed and become Emperor. Through the historical documents presented at the beginning of each chapter, the reader has knowledge of events beyond those of the characters in the novels, and is essentially a futuristic voyeur to the historical action of the narrative. In that sense our blindness to our hero's actions is overemphasised as we tend to ignore the warnings and conclusions presented in these documents. The reader cannot possibly see what is coming in Dune Messiah even though they are forewarned and given insight into events before they occur within the narrative. Hence the reader too is carried away in the messianic impulse that follows Paul Atreides. Leto Atreides and Vladimir Harkonnen The first primary example of a hero being disastrous for his people is Paul's father, Leto Atreides, the ruler of the planet Caladan. Leto is popular among the great houses of the Landsrad, and a distaff cousin to the Emperor Shaddam IV. Despite their family connection, Shaddam IV feels that Leto is a threat to his position and his throne partly because of his connection by blood, and hence possessing the ability to claim the throne. This is also partly because of Leto's popularity in the Landsrat, which makes up one third of the political tripod of power, the others being the guild and the imperial household of the emperor. Leto is not just popular within the political sphere of the Landsrat, but also with his own people on Caladan, and his own staff within House Atreides. His popularity is unusual in the manner of his rule, which is not absolute dictatorship akin to that of the Baron Harkonnen. Even upon meeting the Fremen, his reputation as to how he leads his people is known and established with them, when they say, it is said that the Duke Leto Atreides rules with the consent of the governed. The Duke's own loyal retainers have been gathered around him through either long traditional service to his family, such as his Mentat Master of Assassins, Thufur Howard, or through assistance to those who have a mutual hatred of the Harkonnen, as is the case with Duncan Idaho and Gurney Halleck. Their devotion to their duke is unwavering, and mirrors that of those he rules, which is unusual within the Faifreloik system. Both Gurney and Duncan represent people who have stepped outside of their place within such a feudal system as ultimately do the Fremen on Arrakis, who also end up blindly following Paul. Ultimately, loyalty to the Duke means that most of the members of his household, in a feudal sense, move to Arrakis and ultimately their doom, even with the knowledge that the planet is almost certainly presented as a lure into a fatal trap. The result is not only the death of Leto, 
but the near total destruction of House Atreides, its retainers, followers and citizens. Leto was a hero to his people, and a man who understands the necessity of gaining people's absolute loyalty. In one scene, Paul questions his father, wondering how the Emperor commands such fanatical loyalty and devotion from his elite shock troops, the Sardaukar. His father knows and understands how such loyalty can be cultivated. There are proven ways. Play on the certain knowledge of their superiority, the mystique of secret covenant, the esprit of shared suffering. It can be done. It has been done on many worlds, in many times. In understanding his enemies, Leto is not beyond their methods himself. It is his intent to walk into the trap set for him on Arrakis, because he feels he can exploit the Fremen there, who represent, as a people hardened by life on a very dangerous planet, a potential threat to the Sardaukar. Ultimately he is also aware that things can go badly wrong. On Arrakis, he receives new intelligence about how Paul is being revered by the Fremen in a religious light, both as the Mahdi and Lisan al Gib. Understanding if things do go badly, he recognises the power of religion and myth in the Fremen's attitude, and informs his son that if need be, he should exploit this if he is to survive. Power and fear, he said, the tools of statecraft. I must order a new emphasis on guerrilla training for you. That film clip there, they call you Mahdi, Lisan al Gib. As a last resort, you might capitalise on that. Lido's death in itself also leads to a development of mystique around his son and their family. The passages in the Dune novels which commence each chapter often represent some kind of future history, hagiography, biography, or religious commentary on the events of the novels from a future point of view. Leto's memory is enshrined throughout the novel and brings weight to his son's own myth. There is a legend that the instant Duke Leto Atreides died, a meteor streaked across the skies above his ancestral palace on Caladan. The Princess Irulan, Introduction to a Child's History of Muad'Dib. Leto is obviously presented as the archetypal father figure in Dune, but should also be viewed in terms of the hero as well, in this case the hero as a political leader. Although not conforming to any of Raglan's steps or Campbell's preconceptions of the typical monomyth hero, he is an ideal demonstration of what happens when people follow a leader blindly. He is a man both capable and aware of how to create a myth around his family and himself, and his people suffer an ultimately terrible catastrophe under his leadership. His mistake of leadership is amplified because he is an extraordinary man who takes extraordinary risks. Leto Atreides is named after Leto from Greek mythology, the daughter of the titans Phoebe and Coeus, who was through Zeus, the mother of the divine twins Artemis, Alia, and Apollo, Paul, and often associated with the moon. The inversion of gender here is also mirrored with other characters in Dune, and is suggestive of the inverting of the heroic themes as well as to emphasise the Janus aspect of the story. With Leto as the father of Artemis, a goddess of the wilderness, nature, fertility and childbirth, and Apollo, the god of music and prophecy, we see how Herbert is using his notions of universal mythology to create a sense of myth around Paul and Alia. As with the surname Atreides, the family of Agamemnon and Menelaus, the war leaders of the Trojan War, we are also being pointed towards a sense of great tragedy and disaster. In addition, the envy and jealousy of the Emperor Shaddam IV towards Leto, which ultimately sets the tragic fall of House Atreides in motion, is mirrored in the relationship of Hera and Leto in Greek mythology. The name of Atreides is also meant to suggest the longevity of the family in relation to both Earth's history and the Bene Gesserit Kwisatz Haderach breeding program. Aside from this, Leto also provides us with a standard to measure Paul's actions against, and represents to the reader a barometer through which we can regard his son's own actions 
and the changes he goes through. How do we approach the study of Moadib's father? A man of surpassing warmth and surprising coldness was the Duke Leto Atreides. Yet many facts open the way to this Duke. His abiding love for his Bene Gesserit lady, the dreams he held for his son, the devotion with which men served him. You see him there. A man snared by destiny, a lonely figure with his light dimmed behind the glory of his son. Still, one must ask, what is the son but an extension of the father? From Moadib, Family Commentaries by the Princess Irulan. The Baron Vladimir Harkonnen provides an interesting counterpoint to the actions of Duke Leto, and although both men are very different from each other, they are locked in a political feud that sees both go to comparable ends to achieve their similar goals of power, wealth, and the influence of their respective households and scions. Whereas Leto respects his family life and wishes the best for his son, he is grooming him for the role of running House Atreides. The Baron has similar ideas for his nephews, Fade Rautha and Raban. House Harkonnen in fact merely reflects a diabolical inversion of the attitudes and methods of House Atreides, in their power struggles. While Leto brings Paul up to understand concepts fundamental to how House Atreides operates, such as leadership, loyalty and justice, the Baron's upbringing of Fade and Raban is sophisticated in the sense that it presents an appearance to those that they rule over, which is far from the truth. An example of this is when the Baron has Fade fight duels in a gladiatorial arena, often against opponents who are drugged or already injured, presenting the view to their people that Fade is a mighty and athletic warrior. The Baron here understands the old Roman concept of bread and circuses, the purpose of which, even under House Harkonnen's sadistic rule, is to create a hero out of Fade. As the crowd of the arena swarm around the victorious Fade after dispatching another victim, there is none of the real concern that normally surrounds noble-born members of a household in the feudal world of the Empire. Fade's opponent is one of Leto's captured soldiers who in seeking revenge has a very strong desire to kill the Harkonnen and in another Machiavellian plot, his opponent is not drugged and very dangerous indeed. Fade is victorious however, and has a certain uncharacteristic respect for the dead man who fights with an almost superhuman ability, knowing he is doomed. What makes a man fight in such a manner concerns Fade, but is still able to bolster himself in order to pander to the crowd's sympathies. At this point the Baron lowers the shields around the arena, allowing the crowd to surround Fade. It is in fact the Emperor's agent and assassin, Count Fenring, who shows concern at this unusual breach in security. No one will harm the lad, the Baron said. He's a hero. The first of the charging mass reached Fade Rautha, lifted him on their shoulders, began parading around the arena. He could walk unarmed and unshielded through the poorest quarters of Harko tonight, the Baron said. They'd give him the last of their food and drink, just for his company. In attempting to control the spice production on Arrakis, and especially the unruly Fremen, the Baron, just like Leto, also has plans to manipulate the situation to gain the people's support for Fade, whom he intends to govern the world. The Baron's methods do however vary quite drastically from those of the Atreides, and shows his lack of understanding of the ferocity with which the Fremen both guard their world and are prepared to live and die for their messiah. His strategy is to send in his other nephew, the beast Raban, the Fool, to sadistically crush the population, eventually allowing Fade to come and kill his brother and in doing so become a hero to the Fremen. Although this fails drastically, again we see here an attempt to control a people through the concept of a hero, which hopefully will garner devotion and blind obedience. The Baron is an archetypal villain, intelligent and Machiavellian, yet at the same time a gross and obscene character, whose dark nature is expressed in Dune through his physical stature and both homosexual and paedophilic sexual appetites. His name is suggestive of his villainy, 
and leads us to examine common mythic traits. The name Vladimir is immediately suggestive of Vlad the Impaler, while Harkonnen denotes an ancient heritage that has genetic lines tracing far away into the dawn times of Greek and Pathan and Mameluk, shadows of ancient history that few outside of professional historians or those trained by the Bene Gesserit could even name. It is also worth pointing out that during this time of Cold War anxiety, the name Baron Harkonnen could also be invoking the fears represented by communism and the USSR. <laughs>